You're listening to The Jackie Daly Show. Have you ever heard of the hooked fish syndrome? I didn't know this expression until I began working uh, with my current colleague at the NCPA. Hooked fish syndrome is this. When someone is acting erratically and you cannot explain their behavior, when it seems to fly in the face of everything they ever believed and everything you thought they were, all of the other fish in the pond are like, what's wrong with this fish? When you see one fish just being, you know, pulled through the water feverishly, you know, swimming as if toward the boat and then, you know, lifted up out of the water, it's a hooked fish. They're confused by its behavior and its, its action because they don't know that it took bait and there's a hook in its mouth and that a fisherman is reeling it in. That's the hooked fish. Okay, uh, this, this metaphor is used mostly in business. And it's used to describe people maybe who sell out. You know, if you can't understand why they're, they're betraying the tribe, uh, maybe it's because they're being paid. Okay, it can be used in politics as well to describe people who have been compromised because of campaign contributions. Let me give you a scenario. Um, I, I watched with great interest the, the reporting on this year's election. And I told you, I, I, get, I did a story or a segment not too long ago about the last report, which showed that Hillary Clinton was raking in, like, I don't know, three to one, uh, three times as much money from oil and gas companies as Donald Trump. And this would appear to be a mystery at first because obviously Donald Trump has basically uh, given us an energy policy that is everything that the oil and gas community could possibly want and the coal community. Um, Hillary Clinton has done the opposite. She used to be uh, you know, the, the worldwide queen of fracking, literally. She was uh, coordinating a 13 agency effort to push fracking out around the world and uh, ostensibly to uh, damage the influence of Russians, who knows. But, but the push of our fracking technology and expertise around the world is, is true, that is real. And then when she runs against Bernie, all of a sudden she says, you know, by the time I'm finished regulating fracking, no one will be able to frack in this country. So why are the oil and gas companies supporting her? One theory is that they're simply choosing what they see to be the strong horse. If they believe she's going to win, then they want to be in the good graces because if her administration is anything like this past administration, the government will come after you if they don't like your politics. And that is an egregious, disgraceful state of affairs, not worthy of a free country, more characteristic of authoritarian regimes, Stalinist type uh, tactics. But it was real. I've been talking about the SEC and the DOJ, attorneys general going after Exxon, for example, and scientists who say things that they don't like about government climate policy. Well, believe me, it, it sends a message to everyone out there. So, okay, maybe that's why they're doing it. Maybe they just want to be left alone. Maybe they have a hope and a prayer that Ms. Clinton will see to it that they are left alone uh, to continue their business. Well, I was at the Dallas Petroleum Club yesterday for an event and I brought this up among a very, very influential group of oil and gas professionals and executives. And they gave me their answer. This is what they said, essentially. Right. It makes perfect sense that oil and gas is backing Hillary. Uh, number one, yes, we think she'll probably win. And uh, although we have great distaste for her, there has been a message sent down to the Texas oil patch to some of the more influential people. They didn't say sent from whom, and I did not ask. But a message has been transmitted down this way to assure everyone who is influential that Ms. Clinton will, in fact, do almost nothing to harm the oil and gas sector or to restrict fracking. Now, I almost said, okay, 
You know, so so this is just like what they said in the debate. It's just like the emails that were released by WikiLeaks. She has a public position and a private position. Here's the problem. If if that is true, and I believe it is true, it means that she was lying to the Democrat Party and the Bernie Sanders people to get their votes and to steal them from Bernie. I don't have much trouble believing that. That seems about par for the course. Um, I also think that she has more sense, as did Barack Obama, frankly, than to try to move in and outright destroy oil and gas production. She's not fool enough to watch the economy tank on her watch because that's what would happen if these policies that you see, uh, the, the policies to fight global warming, were really implemented full force as contemplated uh, off of fossil fuels and onto other more expensive and less reliable forms of energy, the economy would tank. I'm, when I say tank, I mean in ways that you have not seen in your lifetime. Maybe that your grandparents hadn't seen in their lifetime. She doesn't want that. She understands that oil and gas provides 10 million jobs in this country. Even Obama got it. So, you know, I think that they could perhaps rely on her promises uh, for that reason alone, because when they told me, well, Clinton has assured everybody she's not really going to come after us in any big way. You know, I felt like saying, OK, well, so was she lying to the Sanders supporters or was she lying to you? And how can you know the difference? They're basically saying that they're taking her at her word that she doesn't mean what she says out on the campaign trail. And maybe that is a reasonable position. I don't think she is to be trusted uh, but I know the value of oil and gas to the economy. People in the oil and gas sector know the value. And they know it's not possible to transition uh, from where we are to where Hillary says she wants to be when she's at a, you know, at a Democrat Party rally. We, she knows. They believe that she knows that the Democrat Party platform is completely a fairy tale, total fantasy land. And there's no way you could implement that energy policy without tanking the economy so that's the answer that's the answer now in this case the uh the oil and gas companies might be the hooked fish okay because they uh, are giving money in what seems to be a way that's counter to their interests and that angers everyone else in the community who doesn't understand why are they doing that they may have very reasoned logical uh reasons for doing that they well certainly i mean that's what i learned i'm not going to name any names i keep my sources completely confidential and i maintain confidences but they're making business decisions it has nothing to do with the candidate that they would like to see in office and this is so true across all the sectors across all of business if you're ever confused why is the hooked fish acting that way why is he swimming so erratically why is he jumping in that boat to be filleted. Uh, you know, maybe it's not a perfect analogy, but that is one explanation and one that you have to keep in mind. People do things for so many different reasons. Maybe Hillary is the hooked fish. The Sanders supporters will surely think so when they find that she, you know, if in fact it is true that we're fortunate enough that she does not persecute uh, oil and gas. They will be shocked by that. They will be let down by that. Why, why would she care? She'll already be in office. And for more on her thinking on how these things can work, please take a look at Peter Schweitzer's book. I've mentioned it to you before. It's called Clinton Cash, the untold story of how and why foreign governments and businesses helped make Bill and Hillary rich. That is the real scandal that the Clintons have in this election. We're all talking about emails. I think that can seem a little bit technical and dry or sterile as an issue. Look, that's a big deal. People go to prison for what Hillary did. But you should ask the follow-up question, the, the even more important question, what was in those emails? What was in those emails? I think Schweitzer is just stopping just short of saying that she put a for sale sign on the State Department and handed out favors in exchange for money to her uh, to her husband's foundation. You just saw in the email release that she said that uh, that Saudi Arabia and Qatar were funding ISIS. Then you see in the public reporting that her husband's foundation has taken millions from both countries. Don't get me wrong. 
that that went on and, and I think started long before they were who they are and before there was ISIS, before there was ISIS. These relationships are old and, and the considerations were different back at an earlier time. But when you see someone making $700,000 per speech, at some level you have to say, was that person's time for one hour worth 700000 or is that a bribe? I'm not telling you it's a crime. I'm just telling you it occurs to me. So, hooked fish syndrome. Why is energy supporting Hillary? It has nothing to do with a sound energy policy. I promise you that. It has all to do with pragmatic considerations and a belief that Ms. Clinton will go back on her promises to the environmental movement. That is what the belief was last night at the Petroleum Club in Dallas. You're listening to The Jackie Daly Show.